Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Come on, clap. Listen. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. Cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. No matter what I have to do, I need you. I need you more and more. I'm chasing. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. Let's do it again. Say, I'm chasing. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you. I need Take it! 
Well, I want you to know I'm chasing after the Lord. 2020 has been an all, uh, has been a, a trying year. 2021, uh, we, we it seemed like things were getting better, but even in the midst of all of that, I've decided I'm going to chase after the Lord, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on. My desire is to chase after the Lord so that the Lord is with me and that I'm able to find him. No matter where we have been, no matter what we have gone through in this 2021 year, uh, the ups and the downs, we have yet have to be able to say, our testimony has to be that God has still been with us. And because he is with us, I continue to search for him. As the deer panteth after the water brook, my soul panteth after thee, O God. I I look for the Lord. I seek him. I search him out because I need him the more in my life. Is there anybody here this morning that can agree with me that we need God the more in the midst of all that we've been through in the midst of all that has happened? We recognize that we need the Lord. Come on. Will you lift your hands right where you are and begin to bless him? Come, I know this is not a, a church. I know this is not what we've become accustomed to. And we got out of the norm of virtual and we went back into our regular services. It seems like we got to do this, but right where you are, can you you just lift your hands and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Can you begin to bless him for who he is? Can you begin to bless him for what he has done? Can you bless him for the ways that he has made for you? Can you bless him this morning? Hallelujah. Come on. Can you bless him because he's been good to you? Come on. We've been through something even though over the last couple of weeks, we've, in, we've encountered obstacles or we've encountered situations that could have become deadly, but God has kept us yet. He has still been faithful to us. He's still been merciful to us and we bless his name. We glorify him. Hallelujah. Come on. Can you bless him this morning? Can you give him praise this morning? Even in your home, can you bless him? Can you bless his name because he's been good? Come on. I know, I know it's different. I know it's not what we want, but can you on this last Sunday of the year, can you bless his name? Hallelujah in your house, right where you are. Can you bless the name of your God? Can you think back on what he has done this year? Can you think back on how he has made ways for you? Can you think back on how he has opened doors
doors for you and made ways for you. And therefore, can you lift your hands and tell him thank you? Can you lift your hands and bless his name? Can you lift your hands in spite of the obstacles, in spite of those that came against you, in spite of those that tried to destroy you? Can you bless his name? Can you glorify him for all that he has done for you? Oh, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord because he has been good. He has been kind and we glorify him on this morning. Well, my brothers and sisters, we're grateful for this opportunity to be able to come into your homes and to be able to share with you. As we have given unto others, let us now give unto the Lord. Let us give to the house of God so that we can do the things that must be done. Let us continue on in the faith. Let us continue on in being committed to Christ and committed to what he's doing in our lives. It, uh, the, the means of giving, the ways to give is on the screen and you can uh, uh, give that way. You have Givelify, you have Breeze, you have Cash App, you have Text to Give. You may choose which way you decide that you're going to give. As our praise team continues to minister to us, uh, we're gonna receive them after they come. Uh, we're going to receive another song from them and then I'm gonna come back with your word. Not gonna be long, amen. We're gonna share a word with you, amen. And we're going to receive what God is saying, preparing us to go into our 2022. Let's close out this year. Amen. Let's tie up all the loose ends and let's get done what we need to get done. Amen. God bless you as you give unto the Lord as he has prospered you in Jesus name. God bless you. Let's receive the praise him as they continue singing. Keep the... Everybody in the house say, say, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Come on, say, beautiful.
Come on, y'all got it now. Come on, say, he's shining. Come on, lift your voice and help us say, say, he's shining. Take it from the top just one more time. If you believe that, why don't you stand on your feet and help us sing? Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and say, Beautiful light. Beautiful light. Say, Come where the dew drops. Come where the dew drops. Sing it all the way out, say, say, walk in, walk Somebody say, Jesus. Anybody know that he's the light? Say, Jesus. He's the light of the world. Yes, he is. Come on, wave your hand and say, he's the light of the world. Wave your hand in this atmosphere and make it known that he is light. Hallelujah. Last time, everybody say, Jesus.
minds. We want to thank God uh, this morning, amen, for our overseer Gloria Harbin. We thank God for her and uh, to all of our elders and to our ministers and to all of our missionary saints and to all of our mothers and to our deacons, to all of you God's people. We are grateful, amen, for our first lady on this morning and for you, you and you, those of you that have joined us this morning by the way of uh, social media, whether it is Facebook, whether it is YouTube, uh, whether it is However, now we did have a schedule to have the Zoom uh, a room open, and unfortunately, we were not able to get that. Uh, so I do apologize if there was anyone that was trying to connect. Uh, it was not open. Uh, so nevertheless, we thank God for being uh, with you on this morning. Amen. I am excited. Amen. Disheartened because we're not able to be together. But I am grateful that we're still alive. And I want you to understand that even in the midst of all of this, amen, we have a responsibility as a pastor and as a leader, I have a responsibility that has to be greater than financial gain. I have to have a responsibility to make sure that you are safe. You have to, I have to make sure, amen, that you are, I, I have to make sure that I bring you into green pastures, amen. And that is my intention. That is what I plan on doing. Amen. God's going to meet our need. God's going to supply our need. Amen. And uh, I believe God's going to do some great things. Amen. And he's given us another opportunity that we are able to give him glory and give him praise. Now, let's look at the word of God. I want to share this with you. Now, we're not, uh, we don't have our normal setup, so we're kind of uh, working uh, that last minute, really, I want you to understand uh, they had to come uh, together to, uh, uh, and bring everything and put things together literally uh, minutes ago. Uh, so we're kind of working uh, at somewhat of a disadvantage. But I'm going to ask those of you that have your Bibles. Y'all y'all still have your Bibles? Amen. Let's go into the Word of God. Amen. I want to share a word with you this morning uh, that I believe is going to bless you. As we go over, as we're preparing to go over into uh, 2022, I've shared uh, more than watch night, uh, more than understanding, because watch night um, has ended. That 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 is over. But what we're doing is we're crossing over over from this year into another year and everything that is supposed to happen for us in 2022 those things that are supposed to happen for our good we want to lay claim to those things and we want to prepare ourselves to be able to go over into what God has for us so I'm not going to be long on this morning but I want to share with you I want to close this session out or close this series that I've been preaching concerning Joshua uh, in the land of Canaan and he, as he's in the land of Canaan uh, I'm sorry as he is crossing over preparing to go over into Canaan he has a word uh, Moses is gone Moses God has taken Moses and he is now left with the children of Israel but the word that God God spoke unto Moses the word that was spoken the promise that was given to Abraham that was given to Moses Moses gave that word unto Joshua and Joshua believed God through the man of God that there is a land that flows with milk and honey Saints of God I want you to know regardless of what we are faced with regardless of what is going on in our uh, in our world with this pandemic I want you to know that the the promises of God are yea and amen. And if God has said it, it is going to happen. If God has promised us Canaan, if God has promised us a land that flows with milk and honey, I don't care what obstacles you have to go through, you're going to meet your Canaan. You're going to get over into your Canaan. But what has to happen? There are two things. There are two things that have to happen. Number one, you've got to cross Jordan. We preached that a couple of weeks ago. You got to cross over Jordan. You got to get up from the place that you're in and you got to prepare to cross over. Then after you get there, you're going to find today, you're going to find that there is yet something in the way. You're in your land of Canaan. You're right where you can see it. You're right where you can smell it. You're right where everything seems to be working, uh, uh, seems should be working in your favor, should be working together for 
you, but it seems like you got one situation that God has to fix for you. And I come to tell you that God is going to fix it. Let's look at God's word. Jo uh, jo Joshua uh, chapter six, verse number one, get your Bible. Joshua chapter six, verse number one. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, and seven, day, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Verse number five, and we'll conclude reading. And it shall come to pass that when ye make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. God bless you and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I want to share with you this uh, as we are uh, this last Sunday of 2021. I want you to hear me very clearly and I want you to hear me very plainly. I want you to understand that where God is taking us, he is allowing us to recognize that there is nothing that can stand in your way. There is nothing. I don't care what you've encountered. I don't care what you've experienced. I want you to know that no matter what is standing before you and your Canaan, whatever it is, you need to understand and recognize that God is not going to allow anything to be able to stop or block what God, what he has promised or what he has planned for your life. God is not going to allow anything to cause you to miss what he is doing doing in this season. Yes, I understand that there's been a lot of loss. There has been a lot that is going on, but I want you to know this morning that that has been nothing but a wall. It has been nothing but something that has been separating you from what God has for you. In Canaan, rest all of your blessing. In Canaan lies all of your miracle and what the enemy wants you to do or what he wants you to feel like is out of all that you have been through, out of all that you have come through, you have come to this place now where it seems as if we are already, listen, it seems as if we were ready to go over into 2022 and seemed like everything was fine. There were many of us um, that were fine and didn't have any issues, but then it seems as if this last Sunday of the year, uh, we have to go through challenges. Now, listen, I, 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 I've, I've never been the one uh, to say that this was a, a, a judgment of God and this was that or the other. I, I've been very careful in that, but I do want you to understand that no matter what it is, God is going to give us victory. I need somebody to type that this morning. God is going to give us victory. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it seems like. I need you to understand this morning that God is going to give us victory. And no matter what you have been faced with this year, come on, can you think back on 2021? Yes, it, it was better than 2020, but there were still some circumstances that we had to face. There still were some circumstances and problems that we were encountering that we were not prepared when we thought everything was through, we had crossed over our Jordan. We had gone through all of the challenges and the trials that we needed to go through. And yet, and still, when it seems as if we should go over into the land of Canaan, we find ourselves still facing another challenge, still facing another circumstance, still facing another issue. But I want to talk to you about this this morning. And I want to encourage you because when you understand where you you are and you recognize what God is getting ready to do, you will be able to embrace this season and be able to embrace the season.
season of the crossover. Come on, and I need you this morning. I need you to lay claim to your crossover. I need you to lay claim to where God is getting ready to take you. I need you to lay claim on it because what God is getting ready to do is getting ready to be awesome. It's getting ready to be amazing. So the enemy has to come and he has to try to discourage. He has to try to make you feel as if it has all been for naught. But I want to tell you this. After the children of Israel come out of uh, uh, the river Jordan, after they cross over the Jordan, they come to the place uh, called Gilgal. They come to the place called uh, encampment. That is, that is Gilgal. And that is where God begins to bring them together. Now watch this. It was throughout this period. It was only in this moment that the children of Israel began to recognize that Joshua was their leader. It was after this, it was after they had gone through this. Uh, this is back in chapter four. If you, if you read this, if you go back to this, you will recognize that it was at this moment where God begins to exalt Joshua in the eyes of his people that they could trust their leader. I, I feel like preaching now because you got to recognize you've got to have faith in your leader. You've got to have trust in your leader. You've got to know, oh God, you've got to know that your leader is not a hireling. You've got to know that your leader does not view you in dollars and cents, but he views you as a soul. And when you are viewed as a soul, you have a greater connection and a greater response responsibility to feed and to lead. So it is now that after they come through the river Jordan, God begins to open their eyes. He begins to allow them to see that I've placed a leader before you that you can trust. I've placed a leader before you that is not trying to be exalted, is not trying to be grand, is not trying to be wonderful, but he's trying to bring you closer to who I am. He's trying to bring you into relationship with me so that you can grow and that you can prosper in all that you do. It, this is the place called Gilgal. It is in Gilgal that God begins to do this. But now there's something else that happens in Gilgal because in Gilgal, that is where the enemies of the children of Israel recognize the might and the power of God. I, I don't have long, I don't have long this morning, but I want you to understand that out of all that we have been through, out of all that we have gone through, you need to recognize that the enemy is sitting and watching. The enemy is standing and watching and recognizing that if God has something has to be on their side because there's no way that they should have survived everything that I've put against them. There's no way that they should have survived every obstacle, everything that has come up against them. They are still standing. Everything that every challenge that they've been faced with, they are still standing and they're still moving. They should have given up a long time ago. They should have thrown in the towel a long time ago, but they recognize that there is something that is working on their side. Look at it in the text, in the text, in chapter five, in chapter five, in the beginning of that chapter, the Amorites and the Canaanites are now paralyzed. Y'all ain't helping me. You ain't doing nothing until your enemies are paralyzed. You ain't doing nothing until your enemies can look and say, we hate them, but it ain't nothing we can do with them. You got some folk in your life right now. The more you try to do and the more you just do what God has called you to do, they are setting up ambushments against you. But I just want to encourage you to know that you don't have to fight in this battle. You don't have to do anything. All you've got to do is continue to trust in the Lord. All you've got to do is continue to trust in him and know that he is going to bring you out and he's going to make a way for you out of nowhere. It is in this place called Gilgal that the Amorites and the Canaanites begin to see
see that there must be something that is working with them. Y'all ain't helping me. There has got to be something that is helping them to survive and helping them to make it throughout all. We know they should not have been able to cross the Jordan. We know in the time of the year that it was, that it should have been impossible for them to make it over. But now all of a sudden they have this power with them. And the scripture says that they were afraid. Uh, you got some folk that are fighting you because they're afraid of you. And it's not you, but it's the God in you. It's, it's not what you can do. It's what God can do through you. It is in this that the, uh, the Amorites and the, uh, the, the Canaanites are, are now, they've come together and they say, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to shut them out. We have heard that God, this God, uh, we don't know who this God is, but we've heard that they have promised that he's promised them Canaan. He has promised them that they're going going to be able to come in and take our land. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to shut every gate. Y'all sometimes you got to understand that the enemy will try to shut you out. Sometimes you got to recognize that the enemy will try to keep you out of what God has destined for you. But I want you to know if God has promised it to you, if God has spoken it in your life, it is going to come to pass. I need somebody to type that this morning. It it shall come to pass. Yes, it's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. I don't care who tries to shut you out. I don't care who tries to blackball you. I don't care who tries, uh, hallelujah, to cause you to be spoken against and tries to put you on the back burner and cancel this. I don't care what happens in your life. You got to recognize that if God has spoken it, it's going to come to pass. God, I feel like preaching here. I don't care what happens. I don't care who comes together and who decides. Let me tell you something. Man cannot decide your fate. Man cannot decide what God is going to do for you. Man cannot determine how God blesses you. Man cannot determine how many times God forgives you. Man cannot determine how many times God uses you. Man cannot determine how many times God will raise you up. But God in his infinite wisdom, but God in his sovereignty, but God in his might and in his wisdom, he is the one that sets up kings and he is the one that takes kings down. He is the one that will bless you. He is the one that will open doors for you. And when God says you're blessed, I don't care what the enemy tries to do. I don't care how the enemy tries to shut you out. I don't care care what the devil tries to do. If God says you're blessed, I need somebody to just shout, I am blessed. He says here now, he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cause them to be uh, afraid. Uh, I'm going to cause them to be afraid. But now th 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 then he says to the children of Israel, I want you to purify yourselves. I want you to make yourselves holy. I want you to make yourself sanctified. I want you to circumcise every male. And what this circumcision means is I want you to, I want you to pull back the skin of your heart. I want you to circumcise yourself from everything that's not like me, everything that you don't need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There, there, there are things, glory, hallelujah, there are things on the male anatomy uh, that, that is there, but it's not needful. Glory to God. Amen. He, he says, I want you to pull back and cut away everything that will get in the way. Y'all see some of us, we got some loose ends in our lives. We, we got, and, and see, see, we, we've been studying when we looking at this, when we deal with the scripture, you must be able to rightly divide. I, I, I got I just got to give you this. You got to be able to rightly divide. And, and when you are able to rightly divide, you will recognize that the scripture is full of allegory and metaphor. All right. And so what this means is because the circumcision of now the heart is not just for the male species, but the circumcision now is for male and female. And the circumcision is cutting away of the foreskin 
that is actually not necessary. And if you leave the foreskin there, it will cause infection and great harm. Y'all ain't helping me. It, and it will lead to greater problems. So what God says is I want you to cut the foreskin of your heart. I want you to cut all the unnecessary stuff. I want you to cut all the stuff that will cause you to be infected. Y'all ain't helping me. I want, I want you to cut off. Yeah, they ain't talking to you. Cut it off. Y'all ain't helping me. Uh huh. They don't want to deal with you. Cut it off because as long as you leave it, it's going to cause you to get infected. And if you get infected, you're not going to be profitable to anything or to anybody. I've got to move on. I've got to move on. I got to go on. Listen, listen, in this place, God begins to give them a preview. Watch this in, in verses chapter five, verses 11 through 12. God begins to give them a preview of Canaan. Lord, they haven't got all the way over there yet, but there are some crops and there. Uh, when I was growing up in, in South Carolina, in the ditches of the, uh, on the road, see, we had ditches in, in South Carolina. Uh, uh, we didn't, we, you know, our, our sewage system uh, wasn't that elaborate. So we had ditches, but what we found out uh, was uh, along the way, watch this, along the way to the field, a lot of times the farmers would drop seed, y'all. Uh, they would drop some seed and, and you would have in the in the ditches, you would have corn that would sprout up. You would have huckleberries that would sprout up. And, and all of a sudden you had a, this abundance of, of, of fruit and un, abundance of, of crops that were just coming. This is what they were experiencing. They hadn't gotten over into Canaan yet, but they were experiencing what it was going to be like. I wish I had somebody here this morning. They were, they were getting themselves ready for what was getting ready to happen. They were getting themselves ready and they were able to live, hallelujah, even though, because at this time, God ceases the manna. What do you do when God ceases the manna? What do you do when God stops sending you manna? You must prepare yourself for your Canaan, hallelujah. If when God cuts something off, it is because he's getting ready to supply another need. Oh God, when God cuts something off, that means he's getting ready to supply your your needs another way. When God, I'm going to say it again because I need you to catch it. When God cuts off your manna, that means he is getting ready to provide for your needs another way. He, he, he gets them to the place now where they recognize they're able to live off the abundance of the crops of Canaan. Uh, and one more thing, and then and, and I've got to get you to understand something here. God says to uh, I'm coming back to chapter five, but before I come back to that, I need you to understand that we hear the story of uh, the children of Israel at Jericho's wall. We hear the story and we jump at this, we dance at this and we shout. And, and for years I've preached and I've told everybody, you've got to go around Jericho's wall seven times. We, we're going to march around it seven times. And on the seventh time, God is going to cause the wall to fall down flat on the seventh time. God is going to cause the wall to fall and, and, Y'all ain't helping me. We're going to, we're going to see God do some great things. And yes, that is the word of God. That is what he says unto them. But you've got to also understand that God has a plan that goes beyond our understanding. And a lot of times we don't understand. God, I feel my help here this morning. A lot of times we don't understand what God is doing. We don't understand how God is moving and we don't recognize that there is something already set up before us. Yes, he tells them, I want you to go to Jericho's wall and I want you to march. Now watch the instructions. He says, I want you to go for six days and I don't want you to say nothing. That's got to be a hard task because you know, some of us have a hard time not talking. You know, some of us have a hard time not running our mouth. Some of us have a hard time not getting on the phone and gossiping. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We have a hard time not being able to get on Facebook and, and tell some somebody and try to be the first one to put news out. But he says, what I want you to do, he says for six days, I want you to gather yourselves. I want you to march around the wall. 
and I don't want you to say a word. I want you to march around the wall and I don't want you to do anything, but I want you to get in this place and prepare yourselves for battle. I want you to recognize something here, that the children of Israel were not strong enough to knock down the wall of Jericho. I don't care what you say. You can say what you wanna say. You can say, oh, they were obedient. Yes, they was obedient. They were obedient to follow God. God's plan. They were obedient to do what God told them to do, but they in themselves were not strong enough to destroy the wall of Jericho. Y'all ain't helping me. The wall of Jericho, if you will, was some eight feet deep. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me. It was some 16 feet wide tall and some eight feet deep. I don't care how many times you walk around it. It ain't going to just fall down because you were walking around it. It was not going to come down like that, but because they obeyed God, because they listened to the word of the Lord, God already had in place what he was going to do. Y'all, I just want to tell somebody this morning, it's time for you to get up and do what God said to do. I, I know you don't understand it. I know you don't see it. I know you can't figure it out. I know you don't understand what is the point of marching for seven days. What is the point on the seventh day? We are now going to march seven times around this wall. It does not make any sense. It doesn't seem like we ought to be doing this. It doesn't seem like this is going to bring us out of anything. What is the point of this? And this is the part that we've got to understand. The enemy wants to fight our faith. The enemy wants to fight our trust in God. And he wants to make us to believe that it's not going to work on in our faith. But I want you to tell somebody, just get up and get ready to march. Just get up and get ready to do what God has given you to do. And God is going to bring you through. Come on, clap your hands, everybody, and give God praise right there where you are. Listen, let's look at the word. And I'm finished this morning. I'm finished. Let, let me give you the word of God so that you'll understand where I am. In, in Joshua chapter five, in verse number 13, uh, uh, the scripture of the Lord says, uh, and it came to pass uh, when Joshua was, was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes uh, and looked and behold, uh, there stood a man uh, over against him uh, with his sword drawn uh, in his hand. Uh, and Joshua went unto him uh, and said unto him, are thou for us uh, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but I am the captain of the host of the Lord, and I am come. And Joshua fell on his face and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. What are you saying, Porterfield? I'm coming to tell you that God had given Joshua an understanding and had given him a visitation of the angel that was going to do work for them. And I come to tell somebody that you've got an army of angels angels uh, that are working on your behalf. Uh, good God, I feel all right this morning. Uh, you've got an angel uh, that's getting ready to fight for you. Uh, and he's got instruction uh, to give word uh, to all of uh, the angels, uh, the host of the Lord. Uh, he's been given instruction uh, that when you follow, uh, y'all ain't gonna help me. Uh, when you follow, uh, the word of the Lord when you do what the Lord instructs and when you follow the plan of God you're not big enough to fight this battle you're not big enough to tear down Jericho's wall but God has already given you 
the victory. He's already got a team of angels that's getting ready to tear down the wall. All you've got to do is be obedient. All you've got to do is follow what God says and he's going to bring it to pass. I don't know why I'm so happy this morning, but I see the angels that are preparing the fight on my behalf. We've got a wall called COVID. We've got a wall called Omicron. We've got a wall that's been set up, but I believe, God, I wish I had somebody that would help me this morning. I said, I believe. God uh, is getting ready uh, to bring this wall down. Uh, he's getting ready uh, to bring this wall down. Uh, God, uh, Lord, help me. Uh, I said, God uh, is getting ready uh, to destroy uh, this wall uh, that's in your life. Uh, you cannot uh, go over uh, into your new place. You cannot go over into your new season with a wall that's separating you. So God, come on, I got to get out of here. God is getting ready to destroy and break down everything that would be in your way. Everything that would stop you from from going over. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's time to go over into your new season. It's time to go over into your new hour. It's time to prepare to cross over. It's time to prepare to go over into greater passion. It's time, yes, it's time to go over into your new season. Church, say yeah, church, say yes, say yeah. My God, my God. Listen, listen, I'm finished, I'm finished. I feel a praise in my soul. I know we're virtual. And I tell you all the time, you got to learn how to move. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to learn how to praise him until you see it. You got to learn how to praise him even though you don't feel like it. You got to learn learn how to praise him in the face of your wall. Bishop, the wall is still up, but that's all right. I know Jesus. Y'all ain't helping me. He's going to make it all right. He's going to fix it after a while. Good God Almighty. I said Jesus is going to fix it. Jesus is going to work it out. Jesus Jesus is going to make everything all right. Say it! The wall is coming down. And it's coming down because God has already set instruction. He has already given. Do y'all read that in chapter 5? He gives he gives the angel of the Lord with a sword that is already drawn. God requires obedience, but at the end of our obedience is our miracle. Oh my God. God requires obedience, but at the end of our obedience is a miracle. And he gives us this miracle. The angel of the Lord and the host of the Lord, all of these angels tear down the wall. They destroy the wall. The people marched, they obeyed God. 
the sound of the horn. My God, I, I'm going to have to deal with this another time. But see, that's the reason why your the sound of your praise has to be sanctified. Because that the host of the angels of the Lord, the host of the Lord's army, they only hear a certain sound. And when they hear that sound, God Almighty, they know to advance. And they know to whatever the Lord has given them instructions to do. They know this is the time. So I'm encouraging you this week, sanctify yourselves and prepare yourselves because we're crossing over. And we're crossing over. There will be nothing in our way. Now watch this. The last thing I want you to understand. Joshua chapter six. Latter clause of this. Let me give you this. I want you to understand this because there's some things that we go through that you need to recognize that even though we're going through it, we're not going to ever have to deal with it again. Joshua chapter six and, 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 and verse number, uh, 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 number 26. This is what Joshua says. And Joshua adjured them at that time after the wall has come down, after the wall has been destroyed, after the wall has been destroyed and, and there's no more wall and Joshua adjured them at that time saying cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn and in and in his youngest son son shall he set up the gates of it in other words Joshua is saying and pronouncing that this wall will never come up again. And if there is someone brazen enough to try to build it, as soon as they begin to build, there will be loss of life. And if they don't stop and they continue, then they will still have to pay. I want you to know that this that God has destroyed, this that we're believing God for, is not going to come up again. And anybody who tries to erect a, a Jericho wall around you, God is going to deal with them. God will handle them. And I want you to know that God is bringing us to this place. The doors of the church is open this morning. There may be someone watching that says, I want to be a part. I need, to, I need the Lord in my life. I need, to be, I need to be in a church. I don't want, listen, I know that there's been a lot of things that have been going on, <clears throat> a lot of things that have happened We've been displaced. A lot of people have not been going to church and we've gotten so used to virtual church that it almost seems as if nobody wants to come back to the house of God. But I want to challenge you. Don't go into 2022 without a church home. Virtual church is not enough. And I want to encourage you to be connected, be committed. It doesn't have to be Ford Memorial. It can be anywhere. If you're in another city and you need help finding a church, contact us. We'll do our best to help you to find somewhere. But you need to be connected to a church and a godly pastor. You need to be connected to a pastor that is going to lead you and is going to give you God's word. You need to be connected to a church with people that can instruct you and give you an understanding. You need to be a part of the church. And you might be watching us and you may be in the Philadelphia area and you're saying, I need to be a part of this church. As this new year comes in, I need to be connected. I need to join. I need to be a part of this church. I want you to take this opportunity to connect us, connect with us this, mor this morning. You can reach us at 215-225-5069. You can go to our website, uh, uh, www.fordmemorialtemple.org connect with us this morning reach out to us you can reach us in the comments all you have to do is say i want to become a member i want the lord in my life all you have to do is send us a message and we will we will connect with you and we will help you don't don't go into 2022 with a, a lot of broken promises but go into this new year knowing that god is going to do great things for you well, my, my brothers and sisters, I'm grateful that we've had this opportunity. This the last Sunday of the year. God has still blessed us. 
even in the midst of this, we're still able to come together. And we don't know why things have happened the way that they happen, but all we know is that, yea, in all these things, we're still more than a conqueror through him that loved us. And because of this, we trust God. I'm asking that you would pray for our elder designate, Larry Roman and uh, Deacon uh, Patricia Roman, as uh, uh, Elder Roman's father has passed away. I'm asking that you would continue to keep them in prayer. Amen. As he has supported so many of us and he has uh, uh, been a support down through the years. I'm not talking about just yesterday, but down through the years, he has supported and encouraged and been there for everyone. I'm praying and asking that you would do the same for him um, this week as they're preparing to do what needs to be done. We want God to make things easy for them and make things work all well. We believe God. We trust God. The last thing that I want to share with you is I want you, if you have not given, I want you, as they uh, place the means of giving and the ways of giving on our screen, I want you to take this opportunity to sow. I want you to take this opportunity to give as the Lord has prospered you. I believe that there are still those of you that have to sow, that still need to give, that, that you need to give unto the Lord. I'm going to ask that you do that on this Sunday morning. Amen. This Friday night, this Friday night, we will be in our sanctuary, in our crossover service at 6 p.m. Now, listen, if you are, uh, uh, if you are uh, feeling sick, if you uh, feel like you have any symptoms, uh, don't come. You don't have to be there. You, we will be virtual. Uh, but if you are able, if there's nothing wrong, I, I'm inviting you to come. We will be socially distant. Amen. I'm asking that everyone that has um, their vaccination we will have a fellowship after uh, but in order for you to be a part of the fellowship you must have your vaccination on file with us amen we need to know amen I love you but I'm not gonna get sick for you I love you we do we thank God for you uh, but we but we we have to be careful and in our fellowship times and our fellowship area uh, we are reserving that for those that have uh, vaccinated themselves and we know that uh, if if there is anything that happens it will be limited uh, so we're asking that you prepare for that this week amen let us know you're vaccinated send in so we can have it on file and we can have an awesome time on Sunday amen on Saturday on Friday I'm sorry we're starting at six o'clock so we can uh, we can fellowship and and do everything and be home uh, before it gets too late. Amen. In the city of Philadelphia. So I'm asking that you would connect with us this week. Amen. We'll give you more instruction, but we're looking forward to a powerful service on on Friday night at 6 p.m. Well, on behalf of Lady Porterfield and uh, to over on behalf of Overseer Harbin and to all of our leaders of Fort Memorial Temple, we thank God for you again. We're grateful that you've been with us this morning. And I pray that you know that God is already tearing down your Jericho wall. Whatever that is, God is tearing it down and he's giving you victory. And all you've got to do is step over into your new promised land. God bless you is my prayer. I pray that you have an awesome day in the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless.